Hi everybody, and welcome back to video number seven in chapter 13. And when we left off, we were looking at no disclosures of contractual obligation. And here is Best Buys. And as you can see, we have long-term debt obligations, and they've broken that down into less than a year, one to three years, three to five years, more than five years. Interest payments, financing lease obligations, operating lease obligations, purchase obligations, unrecognized tax benefits, and deferred compensation. Quite a listing there. So you can see that note disclosures generally indicate the nature of liabilities, maturity dates, interest rates, call provisions, conversion privileges, restrictions imposed by creditors, and assets designated or pledged as security. The fair value of the debt should also be disclosed. You must disclose future payments for sinking fund requirements and maturity amounts of long-term debt during each of the next five years. So if we look at this for Target Corporation here, we can see they have done, they have their current liabilities here, but their note is showing the carrying value and maturities of their debt portfolio. And as shown, they show what's due in the next periods. The total note and debentures, the swap value adjustments, finance lease obligations, and amounts due within one year, and the long term, therefore, the difference of $11,338,000. So they also reflect a weighted average stated interest rate as of year end. The required principal payments on the notes and debentures over the next five years are shown here. In another note. All right, so how do we analyze long-term debt? Two ratios that provide information about debt paying ability and long-run solvency. The debt to assets ratio. And this is an easy one. It's simply total liabilities divided by total assets. Be a little careful because there's a debt to equity ratio as well that, that is a little bit different than this. But this is the debt to assets ratio. There's a, <clears throat> so um, this is simply total liabilities divided by total assets. Okay. The higher the percentage of the liabilities to total assets, the greater the risk that the company may be unable to meet its maturing obligations. Okay, this is a measurement of long-term solvency. Solvency meaning the company's ability to stay in business. An insolvent company is a bankrupt company. Okay, two ratios that provide information about debt paying ability and long run solvency are one that the banks always use is the times interest earned. And here we're going to take the net income, add back any interest expense, add back any income tax expense. Normally that's going to be your operating income, but not always. But that we're going to divide by the total interest expense. And that tells you how many times the company can pay its interest payments when they come due with their current earnings, right? A bank very interested in getting self-paid. Okay, so let's look at Target. Target has total liabilities, 30,946. And um, that's an average liability, I think, um, total liability. 
is. Okay. And so, um, total assets of four, four, 42,779 million. They add back the interest expense of 477 million and 921 million. And they have income from continuing operations of 3,281 million. So if we look at that, our debt to assets, 72.3%. It's got a declined, or it's improved a little bit over 2019. The times interest earned has improved as well from 8.99 to 9.81 times. So this is not a ratio now, this is a times and this is a percentage. Okay, accounting for debt restructuring. Here, troubled debt restructuring occurs when a creditor, quote, for economic or legal reasons related to the debtor's financial difficulties, grants a concession to the debtor that it would not otherwise consider, unquote. So here we have our loan origination, the loan impairment, the modification of terms, and then maybe bankruptcy. So it involves one of two basic types of transactions. One, settlement of a debt at less than its carrying amount. Or two, um, continuation of the debt with a modification of the terms. So the troubled debt restructuring can involve either bullet point one, a transfer of non-cash assets, real estate, receivables, or other assets, or bullet point two, the issuance of the debtor's stock. The creditor should account for the non-cash assets or equity interest received at their fair value. The creditor, right, at their fair value. So, let's take a look at an example. American Citibank loaned $20 million to Union Mortgage Company. Union Mortgage cannot meet its loan obligations. American Citibank agrees to accept from Union Mortgage real estate with a fair value of $16 million in full settlement of the $20 million loan settlement. The real estate has a carrying value of $21 million on the books of Union Mortgage. American Citibank, the creditor, records the transactions as follows. Land, $16 million. Allowance for doubtful accounts, $4 million. And we're, we're saying that's an allowance for doubtful accounts because they have not officially gone bankrupt at this point in time, they being Union Mortgage Company. And then the note receivable from Union is going to go away with a $20 million credit. The bank records real estate at fair value. Further, it makes a charge to the allowance for doubtful accounts to reflect a bad debt write-off. Okay, at this point, it's a bad debt. So union mortgage debtor records this transaction as follows. Notes payable, we're going to make that note go away, zero it out. And we have a loss on the disposal of land because it's being shown here at a fair value of $16 million. And it's on the books. Um, okay, and loss on the disposal of the land of $5 million. I'm sorry, the allowance for doubtful accounts, $4 million, and then notes receivable. Okay, so now we'll zero out the notes payable. Loss on this disposal of the land, and then we'll credit land for $21,000, $21 million. 
that's a little tricky calculation. Okay. And then the gain on the restructuring of the debt of $4 million. Okay. Granting an equity interest, a little bit different here, that American City agrees to accept $320,000, 320,000 shares of common stock at $10 par and has a fair value of $16 million in full settlement of the $20 million loan obligation. American City Bank, the creditor, records that transaction then as equity investment of $16 million, allowance for doubtful accounts, $4 million, and a note receivable which is zeroed out from Union Mortgage. If the stock as an investment at fair value, as an investment at the fair value at the date of restructure. Union mortgage, the debtor records the transaction. It's going to zero out its note payable. It's going to issue 320,000 shares of 10 bucks, $3.2 million, paid in capital in excess of par. That'll take that to 16 million total. So paid in capital is going to be 12,800,000. And then the gain on the restructuring of debt would be $4 million. It records the stock issued in the normal manner. It records the difference between the par value and the fair value of the stock as additional paid in capital. Okay. So if we grant that equity interest American City Bank agrees to accept from Union the 320,000 shares of common stock, $10 par value, that has a fair value of $16 million in full settlement of the $20 million loan obligation. American City Bank, the creditor, is going to record the following transaction. Note payable. We're going to zero that out for $20 million. Common stock, we're going to, we're going to uh, credit common stock for $3,200,000. We're going to credit paid in capital in excess of par for $12,800,000. And credit gain on the restructuring of debt for $4 million. So modification of terms. Here, a debtor's serious short-run cash flow problems will lead it to request one or a combination of the following modifications. One, here, reduction of the stated interest rate. Two, the extension of the maturity date of the face amount of the debt. Three, reduction of the face amount of the debt. And finally, four, reduction or deferral of any accrued interest. So, let's take a look at this example with no gain for the debtor. On December 31, 2024, the Morgan National Bank enters into a debt restructuring agreement with Resorts Development Company which is experiencing financial difficulties. The bank restructures $10,500,000 loan receivable issued at par. That's interest paid to date by, one, reducing the principal obligation from $10,500,000 to $9 million. Two, extending the maturity date from December 31, 2024 to December 31, 2028, and three, re reducing the interest rate from 12% to 8%. That looks like a good place to stop this video. And when we return, we'll take a look at these debtor calculations. Until that time, bye for now.